Arrestors' unique moves and taunts are a key part of their identity. Fans see hundreds of moves on every show, so they appreciate when a wrestler performs one that's outside of the box. Meanwhile, the taunting that's done prior helps the crowd get excited for what's to come. In this series, we've looked at 50 examples that fall into both categories, and today we'll look at 10 more as we highlight iconic special moves and taunts that hyped up the fans. Part 6 The Giant Swing is a maneuver that dates back decades. But the move was never more over than when Cesaro began using it in WWE. Whoa, wait a minute. The giant swing. I haven't seen one of these in years. Around and around we go. <laughs> Four. Fans popped huge whenever they saw it and loved to count along with the swing. Through. Now it's swing time. Here he goes. Cesaro's biggest swing came during his independent days, totaling over 80 swings which the crowd counted as 100. Seven. Unbelievable! Cesaro has done the swing in some unique ways. It's swing time in Chicago! The swing is all so bad! It's just flat. Look out! Oh man! Swinging this around like a baseball bat! What in the world? Into the barricade! Hey! Uh-oh! Oh yeah! While also giving it to wrestlers of all shapes and sizes. <laughs> he can't oh, do it. No, he can't hey. do it. That's the world's biggest swing right there. No, it's a mini <laughs> swing. The Swiss Superman has a similar move done over his shoulders known as the UFO, unidentified flying opponent. Oh, round and around we go. This is in an airplane spin. He calls this the UFO because he doesn't use any hands. CM Punk adopted the Go to Seep or GTS as his finisher and used it to great effect. Punk signaled for the move with the universal Go to Seep sign, which is probably the most perfect taunt for a finisher given the name correlation. Punk did it! Randy Orton going to sleep! While Punk found most of his success hitting the GTS out of nowhere, it's still fun for the crowd to see him signal for it, since this means the match is nearing its most exciting point. Uh -oh. yeah, time to go 99. Time to go to sleep. Well, CM Punk signaling it's time. Well, it's nap time. I think, I think CM Punk feels like the show off needs a little nap. Little nap time. You heard the WWE Universe chanting for the go to sleep. Rowan's in trouble. I can't believe CM Punk's going to try this. The go to sleep. He's also thinking it's time for someone to go to sleep. Could be 99 time. Many of the best finishers have a taunt that lets you know what's coming, and CM Punk's go to seep is no different. And this time. The short arm clothesline, and now it could be time for Penta Oscuro. Is it night night for the nightmare? Billy Kidman had an innovative counter that basically rendered the powerbomb useless whenever wrestlers tried to use it on him. Kidman would transition mid-air and hit a face buster on his opponent. You can't powerbomb Billy Kidman then became an unwritten rule of wrestling that fans like to have fun with. In WCW, Kidman landed the move on his knees. Picks up Kidman. What a move. Into the air. Eddie now has him hooked. Picks him up. Oh, he tried to powerbomb him down. Eddie hooks him again. Up and oh. Kidman in mid -air. What a perfect foil for David Flair. Attempted oh. a powerbomb, reversed in mid-move by Kidman. That was a critical mistake, though, Brain, to go to Jimmy Hart. That's not going to stop Billy Kidman. Amazingly in mid-air. However, after joining the WWF, he switched things up to where the maneuver now resembled the X Factor. Kidman likely did this due to WWE's rings having more of a cushion landing compared to WCW's. Oh, yeah. Well, right there, here comes a big powerbomb, and Billy Kidman countered face first. This alteration made the move look more impactful and devastating, cementing it as one of wrestling's most creative counters. It's illegal. Chris Benoit setting Billy Kidman up. Oh, Billy Kidman, what a counter! One 
in by these taunts of Eddie Guerrero because the tag team titles are on the line. And Kidman with a great counter there! Eddie Guerrero previously used the Brain Buster as a precursor to his patented frog splash before settling on the three consecutive suplex combination known as the Three Amigos. Guerrero in the home of the Philadelphia Flyers, Eddie Guerrero's going oh, for a hat trick! Oh, Eddie got out. him! Again, perhaps the second of the Three Amigos. See how he spins the hips, Guerrero. And it's the third! It's possible that Eddie took inspiration from Chris Benoit's use of the three rolling German suplexes prior to the diving headbutt. Look at this! Oh, the German, the German suplex of his own to Benoit! That's number one right there! Guerrero's arms are wide! Guerrero matched Benoit's intensity with the Germans by executing each of the three amigos at a fast pace. Eddie usually hit the move in the match, doing so with a great sense of urgency. Any one of these suplexes could have been countered, so Guerrero had to be quick. The three amigos perhaps on the way! Look at the quickness here, look at that! Textbook, and here's a third one! Watch those hips! Bam! That's, that's textbook Guerrero, and here's the second one. The three amigos trying to wear Mysterio down. Oh my God, the third one! while also selling how much the move took out of him as well as the opponent. Those ribs! He's gotta hurt the ribs every time he twists in there! And Eddie's nail is popping those hips and nailing that, that, that triple vertical! This is taking a lot out of angle, but how much is it taking out of Eddie to pop and back arch and do this? There's the third one! Off the three vertical suplexes! Since his passing, wrestlers have used the three amigos as a way to pay homage to Latino Heat. Save to the great yeah. Eddie Guerrero! The amigos! The three amigos! Trouble Guerrero with a Royal Rumble moment. This is very, very And he cool. gets it. Vertical suplex by Dominic. And now. Shades. Suplex. And Sasha Banks looking to pay homage to her hero. The Claymore is a hell of a finish as a standalone move. Sal's got to keep the pace quick. And... Claymore kick. Uh oh. Ready to strike. Do it. Another Claymore. However, in 2019, Drew McIntyre made it even better with one alteration. Previously, Drew would simply measure his opponent in the corner. This worked as a heel, but after turning face, McIntyre found a way to get the crowd involved by using a countdown. The countdown was something that came about naturally and helped in cementing the Scottish Warrior as a main event babyface. For Drew McIntyre, maybe about to end! Roman Reigns with a Superman punch! Just inside it, Drew McIntyre. Then he was going to storm through the Royal Rumble match. Claymore to Punk. Taken from him. He's here to get it back tonight. Watch out. Oh, Claymore right to the chin. Went for the Claymore. And he caught Butch. McIntyre. Welcome to Claymore. Country. Her angle liked to bust out a moonsault from time to time. But rarely did he ever execute it successfully. He famously broke Hardcore Holly's arm on an occasion where Kurt was supposed to actually hit the move. This is what shattered Bob Holly's arm. The hook for the ball. And Holly counter. From there on, Angle missed more often than not. Not very Olympic like, but look at Angle! Angle looking oh for the moonshot! Kurt's moonsault was unique in that he got tremendous height as opposed to long distance. And this is why it always looked better when Angle failed to hit the target, especially when he did it from the top of the cage. You got the kiss there! been since Kurt's done this. Does he have one left? Kurt Angle! Moon salt, nobody home! During his feud with Floyd Mayweather, the Big Show debuted a new finisher that was initially called the Knockout Punch. Show would ball his fists up and let rip. After turning babyface, Big Show preceded the KO punch by cocking his fist and yelling out a giant-like scream. Lungs of punk. Right hand is cocked. Oh, yeah, Big Show with a Knockout Punch! The Knockout Punch is cocked and loaded and there it goes. Uh-oh. Oh, unfortunately, oh, don't, for, don't, don't do it. For Heath Slater. I'm not 
not sure that's a favor to you, man. That's an absolute favor. I'm a four-time oh, Intercontinental this. Champion. Yes, Why yes, do you think this. I'm... And Big oh. Show with a knockout punch! The punch then became known as the Weapon of Mass Destruction, or WMD for short. Given the size of Sho's hand, the KO punch was easy to buy as a finisher, regardless if it was hit out of nowhere or if the opponent could see it coming. Yeah, I heard you. Goes for the bro! Oh, what a KO punch! I've got to cut! Mix up that Simmons coming in! Rest assured, when you heard the big scream and saw the bald fist, you knew what it meant. is defenseless here. Oh. Big Show with the KO punch. Very uh -oh. strong. Really? Look out. Oh. Big Jerry. Show. KO oh. punch. Cody Rhodes last hoped he would fall. Big Show fired up now. Got that big right hand cocked. And there it is. While every wrestler has their go-to maneuvers and signature spots they perform on an opponent, some talent like to have specific moves and spots done to them every match. Ric Flair was known for going to the top rope, but never hitting the intended move he had planned. The Nature Boy was thrown to the mat each time. He got caught up there on the first turn buckle. Oh, what a slam! Jerry's down! If she'd have hit him, it'd have been a disqualification! Oh. Little clean possum once again. And Hart hobbling to the corner. Oh. And Flair goes three quarters away across the ring. Sting down, he'll try to climb up, but he didn't keep him down hard enough. Uh -oh. Sting will take Rick Flair top to bottom! Oh. I don't think I've ever seen this work. And Michaels. Oh. And Michaels. No! They're going to try to come off the top. I have worked in 30 years. I've seen this work for you about one out of a hundred times. Yep. And Kenny up. And put it my God, Blair slam. Given how often Rick failed to hit the move from the top rope, the few times he actually succeeded drew a great reaction from the fans. Right hand. And Blair comes off the top. It worked. He finally did it. Blair came off the top successfully. Well, you got to be kidding me. Flair is also famous for being thrown into the turnbuckle while flipping up and over the ropes. This is not an easy bump to take, but Nate routinely did it for most of his career. Let's see here, doesn't know what to do. Oh my gosh! He's got that bad back everybody knows about. Flair upside down! That's the world wanted to see and you're watching it exclusively. Uh-oh, uh pay-per-view. Flair is caught! Flair still wanted to wrestle. He forced Mr. McMahon into the ring. Look at this. They're upside oh, down. That caught in the face. Rick borrowed this from Ray Stevens, who started using the buckle flip back in the 60s. Flair bumped like a madman during his matches, and these two spots mentioned are just some of the ways he gave back to his opponent. We have said, oh, he's upside down. He goes down the apron. The Nature Boy is on top. Like Ric Flair, Shawn Michaels was renowned for his flip into the turnbuckle. Michaels performed the move at great speed with a lot of force. Given Shawn's history of back injuries, taking this bump so often can't have helped. Diesel, in trouble. Oh, not that, that oh, no, forget about it. Oh, no, oh, no. And Shawn Michaels, trying to set up that oh, oh, no. Michaels in another time zone with that back body drop. Oh, Michaels in five down. That being said, HBK continued to run this spot even after he returned in 2002. The velocity. And if you look back on Shawn Michaels' history, it shouldn't be that much of a shock. And look at Shawn Michaels. Yeah. Illumination. Look at him. That's velocity. Another spot Shawn sometimes liked to do saw him leap over the top ropes and fall to the floor. This was a bump Harley Race used to take and one that Triple H began to do during big matches. This big show reverses the Irish no. and look at the impact. It's a gut check for both these magnificent young athletes. Nothing more than a, a non official street fight. A hook impact. And walk, walk back up. Where are we? Oh my God. Triple H, my God. Triple H knocking down our cameraman. The 
Triple H could even stand or even kneel, he will stand. Again. The game attacked the ropes with such ferocity it's surprising that it wasn't until late into his career that he injured himself doing the move. This occurred when Hunter tore his pec wrestling in Saudi Arabia. And Triple H, oh my god, up over the top, Hunter hit hard! So in the Middle East in November I tore my right pec off. Aside from his signature moves and bumps, Triple H also had a special weapon. Hunter began using the sledgehammer in 1999. During his push towards the main event, the hammer gave him a ruthless and more vicious edge as a heel. The fact that Helmsy would risk ending a wrestler's career by using such a weapon showed us just what type of evil character he was. The game has used the sledgehammer in a variety of different ways. Anytime he brought it out, we knew he had chosen violence. I advise you to loot. Hey! What the? Sure, the likes of the tables, kendo sticks, and steel chairs are seen as dangerous, but Triple H and the sledgehammer was downright attempted homicide, giving new meaning to the cerebral assassin nickname. Now if you enjoyed this video be sure to check out our similar videos in this series of iconic special moves and taunts that hyped up the fans. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.